Good morning. Happy 4th of July. Today we celebrate freedom and uh, specifically uh, the freedom that Christ has given us. And so uh, I wanted to share just a quick word. So Daddy, thank you for this day. Daddy, thank you for this amazing place we live in where we have tremendous uh, political freedom and, and, uh, and also the spiritual freedom you've given us in Christ. Daddy, give us ears to hear and eyes to see more of Jesus um, in Jesus' name. So it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. And I want to share today, what, what did Christ set us free from? The scripture says, from the law of sin and death. We've been set free from the law of sin and death. What an amazing scripture if we unpack this a bit. So um, let's unpack it. So first of all, the, the, the law, the old covenant, the uh, ministry of condemnation or the ministry of death is what the scriptures call the Ten Commandments. Um, it was a system in which God demanded righteousness from man. Remember at, the, at Mount Sinai what happened? The commandments came, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. It was man's responsibility to earn righteousness from God. And what it led to was death. In fact, sin took uh, advantage of the law. It, it, sin actually manifested more when the law came. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with the law. The law is perfect. It's like a mirror. Uh, the mirror can show you your imperfection, but it can't do anything to clean you. So if you look in a mirror, you can see your blemish or your spots or your pimples or whatever, but the mirror has no power to clean you. Um, and so the law is a God's perfect standard, but it does not have the power to free you. And so man uh, made the mistake of going under law and choosing to try to earn righteousness um, through their works. And so when Christ has set us free, the, the primary way the new covenant operates is through the gift of righteousness, the abundance of grace. Romans 5, 17 tells us that's how we reign in life, through the gift, through the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Well, that gift of righteousness is um, the, the revelation that Jesus perfectly obeyed the law, perfectly uh, upheld that righteous commandment and uh, that we could never do. He went to the cross to become uh, our sin offering. And uh, when we put our faith in him or our trust in him, we are given his perfect obedience as a gift. We didn't earn it. We receive it through faith and we can't lose it. It was a gift, a gift of grace. And so that's what freedom is. Freedom, true freedom is having peace with God. And the only way you can have peace with God is if you stand in this righteousness through faith. Therefore being, the scripture says, therefore being justified by, by through faith, we have peace with God. That is an amazing revelation because if you want true freedom in life, in your experience, you need to learn this principle to stop, stop looking at your standing before God as a result of your works dependent on your behavior. Start looking at your standing before God as a result of his work, of his obedience. When you receive, uh, when you learn how to continually receive that gift of righteousness, the scripture says you're gonna reign in life. You're going to start to expect good things to happen because you're aware of uh, his righteousness. You're seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness. When you are aware of God's love for you and not aware of your love for God, you're going to start to receive all that God has for you. This has been my experience moving from law to grace has been the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Um, just an insane uh, results come when we let grace operate in our life, which is unmerited favor. When we stop trying to earn the blessings of God and we receive them through faith, um, what a life, what a freedom. 
And so today we celebrate true freedom, which is found in Christ and Christ alone. And uh, I pray that this day just be filled with, uh, with that freedom for you. The, the revelation of the work is finished and really you, are, you were created to enjoy the glory of God freely and all that comes with uh, being in the presence of God. Um, you know, something that hit me yesterday, in the middle of your sin, the most powerful thought, you know, I, taught, I used to teach this and I, it's still true for sure. Um, I've heard it taught many times and I, I've, I've uh, echoed it. And that is to learn how to say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus in the middle of your sin, right? If you're in the middle of an addiction or a bad habit or a destructive lifestyle choice, and it seems like you just can't break free from it, instead of feeling guilty and condemned, start to practice the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Start to confess that, and you'll see that that thing is broken off of you. You're freed from it. Well, this, is, this thought hit me yesterday. You know what's even more powerful? That's very powerful, of course. That is very, very powerful. But uh, I think what could arguably even be even more powerful is to understand in the middle of your sin that God is with you and he's not there to condemn you. He's just there to love you, that he's with you. And that, pre that nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus, nothing. Your actions, your unbelief, your disobedience, uh, your shortcomings, circumstances, angels, demons, nothing in heaven or hell can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And so he is with you and he is pleased with you, um, with who you are, not maybe with your actions, but with who you are. He is pleased with you. Now, if you know that, if you're aware of that, if you meditate on that, I promise you the uh, destructive lifestyle will melt off of you. You will be freed from that bondage, whatever it might be. If you're if you're meditating on the love of God and the and the presence of God, that you're forever in Christ, seated at the right hand of the Father, that bondage will be broken instantly off your life. So that is freedom, guys. Let's celebrate freedom today. I pray that you have an awesome fourth. Enjoy it. Uh, rejoice always. Be thankful in all circumstances. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Bless you. Grace and peace. Till next time. See ya.